Let's get started on hypothesis testing in section 11. <clears throat> so these are all the topics uh, we need to get through. Uh, this is large sample, so it's above 30 basically. And <clears throat> we need to get through uh, A, <clears throat> B, <clears throat> C, and we'll probably do some of D, and then I will leave E and F up to you. It's the same process with different formulas, basically. <clears throat> uh, and in this video, a lot of the material will already be, be posted. I do suggest, uh, aside from this first piece here, that you recopy everything that's on here, even though I, in this case, I posted the notes at a time. <clears throat> so I will read through the details and then when it comes to examples and more specific things, write them out as, as I have done. So <clears throat> here's the concept, here's the idea. Suppose we want to show that a certain thing, a certain widget lasts longer than the, <clears throat> than the popular or accepted widget. It could be whatever, it could be tires, it could be you know, whatever situation. <clears throat> so we are testing the amount of time before it breaks or before it wears out. So, so the, 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 what you're testing, the units have to be the same of what you're looking at, right? So the units would be time. <clears throat> so the accepted amount would be, uh, the average accepted amount before it wears out would be your mu. So anytime you see a mu with no subscript, that's the, the actual amount. We may or may not be able to figure that out, <clears throat> but that's what you assume that is. And let's suppose it's t days. So this is what we call the null hypothesis. So <clears throat> it's the accepted days in this case. And we label that uh, h sub zero or h naught, or it's called the null. I'll write that down. Well, it's written a few places as well, so the null. <clears throat> so we write the uh, accepted amount as mu sub zero. And so that's, but the when it's just mu, that's the actual, which is out there. We don't know necessarily that it's true. So we don't know necessarily this is true. It's just what's accepted, what's been tested. That's mu sub zero, mu, mu naught. <clears throat> okay, so this is the null hypothesis. Okay, uh, you, so let's suppose your startup company wants to prove otherwise that shows that <clears throat> maybe what they have lasts longer than the accepted. Uh, they say it lasts, let's just say, M days. <clears throat> it could be minutes, seconds, whatever. This is what's called the alternate hypothesis, and that's labeled HA. <clears throat> so HA is the alternate hypothesis, and you would write mu sub A. So that's, when you're sampling, that will end up being your sample X bar, so, and then you, you're testing it using the, this process. <clears throat> okay, so, make, so again, I would write all that down uh, so we'll investigate in, in this, the following concepts, uh, and this first part is really just written out for you to look at and, and recopy. <clears throat> this is obviously these are right from the book, which I would still recopy it if it's in my notes. Because <clears throat> it's important to get a feel for the process and the steps. So... <clears throat> Uh, a so these are these are more formal tests than we did in the previous section. This is a process you go through to accept or reject uh, the null hypothesis. <clears throat> so the null hypothesis denoted HA, you're going to do that. You're going to write down the alternate hypothesis, HA. Did I say H? It's H naught. The test statistic and the p-value. We'll get the p-value later. The test statistic is usually your Z, you're calculating Z, right? So it's, and that is your standardized uh, deviations from the mean. 
<clears throat> we'll look at the rejection region, and then we will talk about the conclusion. <clears throat> okay. Let's continue. And you can look at some of these definitions. The two competing hypotheses, alternate hypothesis, generally the hypothesis of research wishes to support, and the null hypothesis, <clears throat> a contradiction to the alternate hypothesis. So that, So it doesn't have to be an accepted thing. It's just you're comparing the two, essentially. <clears throat> All right. So the type of conclusion you will say, and this is what's important in a lot of this, is the wording and how you say things. So we say uh, the type of wording. We reject H0 and conclude HA must be true. Or we accept H0 as true and we do not reject HA. So that's some of the language we'll be using. And there's a couple others we'll talk about. <clears throat> okay, next example. Let's look at this one. This is a pretty straightforward one. Uh, that's right from the book. Did not write this one out because we'll just go over just briefly. If you want to show the average hourly wage of construction workers in the state, it doesn't matter what state, is different from $14. So it could be higher, it could be lower. That when we say different from, it's usually two sides. Uh, this is, <clears throat> the, so, so you, you come up with a constant. What's, how do you write this out? Usually you start with a null, right? So the null hypothesis is that the actual is 14. <clears throat> and theoretically, you could find it because you could sample everyone, but that would be difficult to do. So <clears throat> the, the, actual, the, the, yeah, the actual population mean you are assuming is 14. And you want to show that it's different from 14 by doing sampling. So you, this is different. This is the alternate hypothesis. H, A, or mu uh, does not equal 14. <clears throat> so sometimes right here, we'll call this mu, let's see, we'll call this uh, mu not. Oops, let me fix that. That sometimes is, you write as mu not because that's what we're using. We don't really know yet. <clears throat> okay, so you'll see that notation and it'll make sense as you go. Uh, you'd like to reject a null hypothesis, concluding the California mean is, is not equal to 14. Now, usually you want to say it's like, it's, it's lower. You're proving that it's lower than that, but that's not necessarily how you set it up. <clears throat> All right, so that's one case. And I, as, as I wrote down here, that is a two-tailed test when you say not equal to. And I'll talk about the tails of tests in a, in a bit here. Okay, so the test statistic is the mean of the samples. It doesn't have to, the test statistic does not have to be a mean. It could be a standard deviation. It could be the mean of the standard deviation. So you have all kinds of things to that it could be. Most of the time, we will call it the mean <clears throat> of the samples. Let's look at the concept of 9.2. A milling process currently produces an average of 3% defect, uh, defective, whatever. You're interested in showing that a simple adjustment on the machine will decrease <clears throat> uh, the proportion of defective uh, items in the milling process. So the alternate hypothesis is that it'll decrease that. So <clears throat> HA is the proportion that, uh, that are defective. So this will be, it's, it either works or it doesn't. So this is a proportion. We'll go down. <clears throat> the null hypothesis is, of course, that it's equal to 3%. So anytime you see a percent, you just, just change it to decimal. Just divide by 100, and that's all you do. <clears throat> okay, so proportion is really the same process. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to go over it in videos as much. There's plenty of online stuff to look at on the on hypothesis testing. Uh, but I'm not going to leave it just up to them because I want you to see some of the details in this way. So 9.3 is what's called a one-tailed test, and I'll get to that in a bit. <clears throat> All right. 
uh, p-value. Let's talk about p-value for a second. <clears throat> okay, so the p-value is calculated is, is the calculated probability on the of the data on the data collected. So you actually do a calculation. We're gonna look at two different things basically. So it's the p-value, and then we'll look at the rejection region and whether you accept or reject uh, the null. So <clears throat> uh, we'll probably most of the time calculate both. All right, so uh, based on all the data, so you're gonna collect all the data and then you will calculate the p-value. Uh, and the p-value is not a proportion, so just be careful. It's just unfortunate, you know, lettering. All right, so let's kind of, again, back up. This is what you're going to do. The basic concept, let's read it, read it directly. The basic concept is we sample the population. We use a large sample. So we can assume it's normally distributed, right? It's symmetric and normally distributed <clears throat> uh, for the test statistic. Uh, usually it's uh, x-bar or the variance or one of those, okay? Then we calculate the test st statistic, okay? We calculate z, and actually let's just take the not there. Just, just say z. <clears throat> so this example you'll see in the book and other books. You'll, they'll put in sigma. But we don't usually know sigma. I mean, no. I mean, it's kind of silly to think you do. So you use the you use s instead almost every time. So you're really going to use this as your test statistic when you're subtracting the means. And notice I put mu not because that's the accepted. It's mu is the actual, which we don't always know. We don't usually know. Okay, where mu not is the understood or assumed mean of the test the statistic and sigma is approximately s for large n so <clears throat> uh you pretty much aren't going to use sigma you're the actual standard deviation you're going to use the sample standard deviation uh so then we calculate that we at this time could calculate the p-value which is the probability uh of the test statistic happening either on both sides or on one side. So you calculate this <clears throat> or you calculate the sum of that, that Z is greater than Z naught or that Z is less than Z naught. <clears throat> then uh, you could, so that's, that. so this is one-tailed right here. Those are one-tailed. Oops, change that to one-tailed. And this sum would be two-tailed. And we'll talk about that. <clears throat> okay, we'll get to that stuff as we do an example. All right, so this, this, so you do that stuff. You calculate your Z. And remember, Z is just your standardized uh, standard deviations like you're normalizing, you bring it to zero away from the mean. So every time you see z equals, that's how many standard deviations away from the from zero. Right, the, so then we plot z naught to determine if it is in uh, one of the rejection regions. Okay, so stay with me. This is what we're doing. Um, so you're asking the question: What region does z naught lie in? Uh, I always like to plot the graphs. Okay, I do. I like to do all these graphs to figure out if it's in the region or not. <clears throat> all right, so let's talk about the tails. All right, so two-tailed is this green shaded region. It's called the alpha. It's, that's your alpha. Your alpha is the sum of whatever the green is. So two tails, it's either side. This is the not equal to. So when you talk about mu not equal to mu not, uh, that so you know your your uh, your at, the actual is not equal to the accepted is one way of saying it. <clears throat> then you have to go both sides. It's either less than or greater than. So it, it 
would lie on either side. So the rejection regions here are these values right here. So it's here over. Those are your rejection regions. We'll talk about how to get that specific value in a bit here. <clears throat> so when you calculate Z or Z naught, if it lies in those areas, then you're going to reject the null hypothesis. All right, and then one-tailed, similarly, it's these sides or this side. Okay, go away. All right, or it's this side. Okay, so take a moment to write all these details down and <clears throat> kind of think about it don't just move on <clears throat> all right so rejection region you calculate so you calculate your z right which is this calculation so you have to gather all this information you will have to figure out this value right here that is based on your alpha and that is a determined amount like you will say use alpha at five percent or alpha at uh, um, one percent, <clears throat> or ten. Usually, don't use ten percent, but you can. In some areas, some areas do, and I'll talk about that. Okay, <clears throat> uh, this just uh, so for one tail test. This is a negative test statistic, so to the left, and this case, this is a positive test statistic, and that your test statistic is Z. So if you calculate this, this is your test statistic, test stat, okay? That's what you're doing. <clears throat> okay. So the other way to do it, and I often do this concurrently just to double check things, is we calculate uh, the actual probability once you find your test statistic, like what is it? <clears throat> And then you just, you compare it, you look at it. And then you look at these cases or situations. So a small p-value indicates the null hypothesis H0 is not true. So basically it's out here. You got, so if it's small, then it's this little piece out here. And that means your z-value has to be in those regions, which is the rejection region. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and you reject a null. Now, that's how you state it, too. There's just some other language. You just say you reject the null. Everybody in stats would know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, it is farther away from <clears throat> uh, mu naught, which will be here. Okay, so in the middle, it means it's out here. So as you go farther out here, be a small probability. Remember, area under the curve is the probability. So it would be out here. Okay, or vice versa. You would calculate this plus this, maybe. And <clears throat> it's, it's farther away from mu naught. Okay, so we'll go through some details and examples next. And... <clears throat> uh, talk about the uh, cases, the different cases. So we will go through uh, this case and do this calculation in detail, and we'll do a number of others.